Right, I wanted to do a video looking at um, how gas masks should be tested because what I want to see here is if people have better suggestions than what I do currently because I've seen lots of people complaining about my videos online in various places saying you shouldn't test gas masks like that, that's not the right way to do it but they never offer a solution or if they do it's something totally impractical and stupid. So what I want to hear from you is in the comments what would be a better way of testing respirators because obviously at the moment one of the methods I use is to go into a bathroom which is quite small, spray a load of air freshener and see if any smell comes into the mask. Obviously if it does we know the seals have failed on the mask. But people are saying that's not a very good way to test a respirator. Another way I test them is isomyl acetate, open the bottle of that, very strong odour. And um, obviously if you can smell that around any of the cracks of the mask or through the filter or through the threads near the filter, you know the mask has failed. And I know when uh, respirators are done for industrial fit testing, they generally put a little tent over you, put the isomyl acetate on a bit of cloth that sits inside a little hood that's over the mask, and then you're meant to sit in there for a minute or two and then say if you smell anything, you know, to give it time to work in an enclosed space. But again, you're just testing a vapour in an enclosed space, so it's no different than just spraying a load of air freshener in the bathroom as far as I'm concerned. Um, one method I've obviously heard people suggest, which is a really stupid thing um, to suggest to civilians, but people suggest it, is that you need to use a tear gas test like the militaries use. And again, that would be an okay way of testing a mask, I guess, but as a civilian in the UK, how am I meant to get tear gas and where would I be safely deploying tear gas to test a mask? Doesn't quite seem to be a sensible idea, does it? Another thing that you may not be aware if you're suggesting uh, testing with CS gas um, is it's actually a particulate, not a gas. Particulates are bigger than vapours, therefore air freshener will get through smaller cracks in a mask, same with isomyl acetate, than using a load of tear gas would. So tear gas is less efficient in that method um, because if you've got a very small crack in the mask, the particles couldn't necessarily get through because it's blocked by a particulate filter, not a vapour filter. So it's not as efficient in that way. And when militaries use tear gas, it's for mask confidence test. The whole point is that it's very horrible, nasty stuff when you've not got your mask on. When you've got your mask on, your eyes aren't burning anymore and you can breathe. Therefore, you know, it's to give you confidence that this mask is going to save your life when actual chemical weapons are used, not um, stuff like that. I've also heard people say really stupid stuff like you should test the mask of chlorine gas. I'm pretty sure if I manufactured chlorine gas and filmed it, that would be a crime, and then I'm proving that I've committed a crime by filming it, you know, by manufacturing a chemical weapon, or something close to chlorine, if it, even if it's not chlorine. And, obviously, if it didn't work properly, it could have very serious health consequences. Another thing as well is you actually need to have quite a high dose of chlorine to um, notice the effects of it. For chlorine to be properly poisonous, you actually have to have a big volume of chlorine, so it's not even efficient in that method. Low doses of chlorine would maybe make you feel slightly nauseous and things like that, um, have similar effects of tear gas. If very small amounts of chlorine got through, um, then you probably wouldn't notice it very much. Another thing, as I've said lots of times in these things, I'm not testing the filter so much, obviously. If the filter fails, then I need to get a new filter to test it. To test it isn't the filter, what I'm doing is testing the seals on the mask, um, not the filter. Because again, I've had people say like, oh, that chemical's too easy on the filter. Well, that's not the point. The point is, do the mask seals work? Because even if you had the best filter in the world, but your mask had a tear in it or something like that, and the one the seals is broken, um, obviously a smell or whatever still get into the mask. Um, another thing I will point out as well as I was saying, tear gas is a particulate, um, normally how it's dispersed. So please be aware of that, because I've heard people saying that tear gas is a better gas than other gases, when it's not even a gas, it's, although it's called, you know, gas in a slang term, tear gas, it's not a gas, it's a particulate. Um, so again, like I'm saying, if you criticise these tests and you want me to do something better, that's apparently better for just, you know, doing a fun test of a mask, let me know in the comments how you'd like it done. Because this is the problem, when people criticise you but they don't offer any, you know, constructive criticism, you should do it like this. Uh, I'm happening to think more that they don't really know what they're talking about and they're just doing that to be controversial, make a fuss kind of thing. As I said, yeah, my videos aren't perfect. Uh, my budget is, I have a few people donate to me on Patreon, which I'm very glad for, and most of the time it's just a bit of fun testing them with sprays and things like that. Um, like I said, I wouldn't simply 
just do a test with air fresh in the bathroom and then say wow the mask is going to work perfectly no matter what I've said many times about masks that old masks are going to be more vulnerable to blister agents for the most part you know and like I said if I wanted to actually use a mask I'd use my Avon CT12 that's still well within its 20 year shelf life um, with my filters that are sealed in the you know I've got some set up in the bag I've got some in the drawer um, that are you know sealed and still within date that's what I'd actually do if I was using a mask in a CBRN scenario however lots of people just want masks for nuisance stuff like spray painting and things like that and regarding um, using banana oil uh, isomel acetate that is used by lots of companies that use masks for actual industrial purposes if the workers are then exposed to that gas they can sue the company so actually they do a better job of testing it as far as I'm concerned the militaries do where put the mask on here's some tear gas that's not got through you're alright because there has been examples of obviously masks that are fine against tear gas um, but then have, you know it's been found that silicons in them and things like that are very vulnerable to blister agents and things have to be changed in the masks so like I said if you've got a better idea tell me don't go you are wrong and not offer any solutions because that's not gonna change anything is it uh, as said I do these videos honestly I'm not selling anything to anybody I never say oh look I'm getting a commission on this buy this particular gas mask so I can get a commission or I'm selling this gas mask buy it because I've said it's great um, I don't like YouTube channels that you know try and shill actual products um, you know, the closest I come to recommending products are either where I've been sent a couple of like through night torches for free in the past and I made it very clear I've been sent them for free Beastor sent me stuff for free before um, you know I, I've bought a lot of stuff from him but you know I'm never saying oh look this Beastor stuff is better than anything else available you know if like I said the FP5 filters he sells are really good because it's the only filter I've found so far that's a reasonable price and easy to get and that fits on old Warsaw pack masks and makes an airtight seal but, you know, if other sellers had FP5 filters in for a cheaper price for longer dates, and I'd suggest you get them from them, not him. You know, it doesn't... That's the thing. It's that, like I said, I'm not trying to shill anything on this channel or sell anything on this channel, so I find it very odd when people attack my videos as specifically like they think I'm trying to sell you something in particular. I collect masks because I have an interest in them. I find them cool. I find lots of other weapons and, you know, stuff. That's why my username is that cool and like to buy that as I said I get a lot of masks because they're generally cheaper and easier to find than a lot of other military surplus so that's mostly why I go for the masks but like I said I just find it a bit weird and irritating when people often like criticize stuff but then they won't offer any solutions it's just it's bad um, don't listen to his videos he gives bad advice I am not going to offer any solutions to that instead uh, like I said, it's been bad recently, actually, because of all the GCHQ and Russian spy trolling and all that um, that's been going on, because I talked about the Novichok thing, but, you know, it's it does just annoy me in general when people will do that and not actually offer any solutions. So, as I said, if you've got a better idea, please tell me in the comments. If it's a constructive criticism thing, I'll happily take it on board. I wouldn't mind buying more thorough testing equipment if I could find something for sensible amounts of money that would work. But don't simply say, no, the way you do things is bad. Don't listen to that person. And that's what you say. Because that's not offering any solutions, is it? 